That was pretty uh, pathetic. But anyway, welcome to everybody. Um, whether you're watching this video today or a week from now or whenever, we just want to welcome you to uh, the first Through the Bible um, Bible study. Lord willing, I am intending to give in 2024 exact uh, not exactly, but almost exactly one week from the start of th this new year in January 2024. Today is uh, 7 January, uh, year of our Lord, 2024, Sunday. Okay, uh, so here we go. We're diving into it. And as I already explained in the previous video, um, getting into the first chapter of Genesis, um, I could probably uh, expound on all the ramifications of this chapter and even just the first verse uh, probably for weeks without exaggeration. Uh, so my challenge right now is to try to uh, get to the most salient points, the most important things the Lord might have me share and probably uh, the, the least amount of input for me, the better, the more of God's word I just present to you simply as it is without commentary is probably good um so let me go ahead and start reading this is from king james um, bible translation i don't like it that they call it a version because it's not a version it's a translation and why am i using the king james translation 1611 because according to the best of my knowledge and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, it's the most a accurate English translation that we currently have. And when I say accurate, accurate to the original trans uh, original scripts, the original um, uh, written word. Um, who is the author of this book on a human level? Um, most commonly attributed to Moses. Um... Am I a great Bible scholar with a lot of background on all the technicalities of um, the origins of the text and all that? No, I'm not. And there's a lot of, and being the new year, you know, there's a lot of other Christian commentators that are out there. And they're giving Bible studies, which is great. You know, for a second, to be honest, I was annoyed thinking about it. You know, it was a new year, so they got to start. Why they got to start and all this well, we're not in competition. We're on the same team. And as long as the word gets out, that's all I care about. Um, and some of these people are a lot better than I am as far um, as far as their presentation, at least. Uh, my presentation is very poor. I hope to think, I like to think my experience and research that I've done for years counts for something. Um, I am a graduate of the Oregon Youth Revival Bible uh, study course, which I went through, I believe, and it was so long ago, um, probably had to be around 1972, thereabouts. Um, that's the extent of my formal training. Everything else I've done on my own. Hopefully, uh, and of course, we know the, the one and only teacher is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, uh, which leads us into all truth as the book of John tells us. He says, we need no teacher, um, but the spirit that's in you will teach you the correct meaning. Um, the con converse is also true. If you don't have the, uh, the guidance and discernment of the Holy Spirit, you're liable to be led astray if you look into the Bible. And you might uh, think the Bible contradicts itself, and, um, especially if you're unlearned. Um, there's a number of people out there giving Bible studies and let your discernment uh, lead the way. Um, we got this guy I've noticed in the last month or two uh, out there and calls himself the AVS Saint. Um, so far from what I've seen, he's right on in what he's presenting. Um, his latest video is talking about, are you a critic of Christ and the church? Uh, no, I'm not a critic of Christ. Maybe some of the church I am. Um, if I got to say right now, why does he worry about defending the church? 
All I'm worried about is defending the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's all we all should be worried about. Now, do we want to uh, be part of a church that is biblically sound and uh, and does good things, led by the Holy Ghost? Of course we do. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know what part of church he's from. My first sense is that he's part of a Catholic thing. I maybe need to watch more of his videos to get a better sense of where what he, that guy is. And then we got uh, Let's Be Frank, who's a great political commentator, very conservative, and uh, has been known to give Bible studies every now and then. I've listened to him. He's he's really a good brother. Um, and quite honestly, uh, due to my transportation challenges I have, I don't have a car right now. Um, and I am getting up there. Uh, I am not form. That's that's probably the main reason that I don't attend church on a regular basis. And some people might go, oh, he doesn't attend church on a regular basis. Well, if you're going to hold that against me, I guess you might want to go to one of the other guys. But another, I think, I think the best guy out there right now at the present time is Pastor Greg Laurie. Who gives, who's the pastor of the Harvest Church, which I guess if there's a church I'm actually part of, in spirit at least, it would be the Harvest Church. Um, they come from a background of Calvary Chapel ministry with Chuck Smith and uh, all the way up to, the, and the Jesus People movement and all the way up to today. They consider themselves non-denominational, which I am as well. Um, people say, what does that mean? Well, to be honest, I can't really give a solid definition of what that is. I like to think and just take the Bible as it is. But, you know, we all have points of view and prejudices. Um, okay, so... <sighs> We've got to begin here. Let's just uh, read the first few verses and I'll give you what I think is salient and relevant. Okay, so it says in, in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 1, reading on down um, here at the King James Bible translation um, online, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, I'm going to hold the line right there. Now, in order to go through the Bible in roughly one year, and, and uh, I reiterate again, it's going to be an approximation. My original idea, I got on here all kind of all ready to go on January 1st, thinking, hey, okay, so let's declare... It's a new year starting. We're going to have to go through the Bible in exactly one year. Um, well, it turns out it's not going to be exactly one year. And I said from the beginning, Lord willing, and that's the way it's going to stay. Um, without going into all the gruesome, boring details, I did get, did face a few delays. Some of them were technical issues. And there's there's been some other interruptions and when that happens and you get uh, interrupted uh, from out of the blue for, for seemingly no reason, believe it or not, that's usually a good sign. It's a, it's a sign that you're over the target. That happens every single time I try to um, try to uh, spread the gospel uh, in any fashion. There's some kind of delay or hindrance or something. If there isn't, almost expected. If there isn't a, some kind of hindrance or delay or distraction going on, then probably something's wrong. <laughs> okay. So, as I just said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, hang on to that thought, because I'm going to expound on that a little bit. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, the challenge we face been going through the book of Genesis and uh, 
the inspiration I take in my style of preaching, we all have different styles. Let's be frank has his style. AVF Saint has his style. Pastor Greg Laurie has his style. But as long as we all maintain, uh, adhere to the to the scriptures uh, through the Holy Spirit, uh, we're on the right track, even though we present it in different styles. And yes, God does use different personality of you know, uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the the prophetic books in the Bible, um, all the prophets had their own individual personalities. The apostles did too. Okay. Um, sometimes the personalities get in the way of the simple truth God's trying to show people. But uh, they can also be a blessing and an inspiration to, you know, certain people gravitate to a certain style more than another and vice versa and so on but anyway the earth was without form and void okay so why does it tell us that first of all i just want to say what's here in genesis is not a complete picture of every single detail uh, but i believe this is what i believe and i believe the rest of the scriptures bear that bears this out is that we're told what we need to know. Maybe not everything we would like to know, but we are told the bare bones essential of what we need to know in order to have our faith on a solid foundation. Okay, so we see that God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, the existence of God here is not questioned. So if you don't believe in God, you're going to say, okay, this, let's hear the myth. It's not a myth. God is real, folks. Jesus Christ is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And uh, so this earth didn't come about by evolution or any other method or the Big Bang. And even if it came about by the Big Bang, who, who, who set up the conditions for the Big Bang? Something had to proceed. It, uh, was there a time when there was no time? Maybe. It doesn't say here. I believe this account. Why? Well, the scriptures have never been proven wrong in 2,000 years. Every time somebody thinks they've got the scriptures in the car, aha, we found a flaw in the scriptures, it turns out that on further examination, um, the scriptures are exactly right. So uh, it's not that science is wrong. It's that the scriptures are right. <laughs> okay. Now, the biggest challenge most Christians have faced in the last well, I don't know how long has the theory of evolution from Char Charles Darwin been around? A hundred years? Um, of course, we started out going back to the Catholic Church. Um, Galileo made the bold statement that the earth revolves around the sun and that not the other way around. Um, and for that, he was supposedly ostracized by the church, which he probably was. Um, boy, at some point I'm going to have to get into a commentary about the Catholic Church, which started out, did indeed, in my, from the research I've been able to tell, did indeed start out from the genuine Church of the Apostles. Okay. But as, uh, it's just a rule of thumb, wherever there's a great amount of light, there's the greatest amount of darkness. Um, because the darkness seeks to destroy the light. And so uh, I don't want to get ahead of where I am. Now we're only in verse 2. The earth is without form and void. Okay, so to get back to my original thought, um, Charles Darwin and Theory of Evolution tells us that the life we know now as humans has evolved from simple cells and over time, environmental pressures and conditions have caused this life. It has survived all this time. And as the way uh, do these environmental pressures and conditions, it has evolved into higher and higher life forms as a means of keeping itself alive, survival. Okay. Uh, it seems to make sense. The evidence seems to bear it out. So does that mean this Bible isn't true? No. Okay, so here's let me explain. And I used to be in the same boat with, I would say, probably uh, at least 80% of the Christians still believe 
that the book of Genesis teaches that God made the world and everything that's in it and the universe and everything in seven literal 24-hour days, okay? I don't believe it shows that. And for the examination, it doesn't actually say that. Uh, and yet, I believe that. And a lot of Christians to this day still hold that view. Now, am I, am I one of these people who think... Uh, you know, there's so many ways to look at this. Uh, the book of Peter talks about how uh, one year is as, a, or excuse me, a thousand years are as one day to the Lord. So does it mean he did it in 7,000 years and incrementally, you know, and maybe some evolution did occur. He, you know, he made the plants first. He first he made the earth and then the plants came and then the birds came and then... The rest of the animal kingdom came, and so there was a progression. Yeah, that's a little form of evolution. Well, something a brother said to me got me thinking, and this is another reason why I like the Harvest Church, because God did create the heavens and the earth, but then the earth was out. Is the I believe that the this idea of harvest in other words there's a process the seeds are planted into the earth they grow they take shape and then eventually they get big enough and they're harvested aren't they that's what happens with our food uh, that's plant-based at least and even to some extent um cows and pigs and other meat sources sheep and goats are harvested they're raised until their time when they're too old or they're right ripe to use a, a, a for lack of a better term they're ripe or ready to eat and then they are slaughtered and processed both plants and animals for our consumption okay so um the way I, look, I currently look at this now, I have changed my view on it, and I think a lot of Christians have come around to this view, is that, yes, God created the heavens and the earth, but it doesn't say whether this was the first time he did it or not. If we read the scriptures, beyond Genesis, in Revelation, the book of Isaiah, is especially rich in talking about the earth, it makes it very clear there will be a new heaven and a new earth created. Okay. Um, so has that process been done before? And would that explain um, uh, the fact that ge geologists, as near as they can figure out, have, have found out that this earth and the surrounding universe is billions of years old? It doesn't. Now, is God capable of creating the universe and everything that's in it uh, in si seven literal days? Yes, he is. He can do it any way he wants. Could he have done it in an infinite number of ways? My personal belief is yes. If you disagree, put it down in the comments, I guess. Um, but yeah, God can do it any way he wanted. He, But the fact is, he did it the way he did it, didn't he? Okay, so we got to try to discern how does that... Is it important? Do we need to know that? Do we need to know exactly? I think it was, it's helpful, to say the least. It's a pretty pretty doggone important question. So I think that the Bible, taken as a whole in this subject of God creating us, and the earth, and everything in it, in it, which includes us, and the universe, you know, uh, is the fact. And the Hindus certainly believe this. Now, people are going to really jump out. Christians listening to that are really going to flip out. Oh, he's teaching Hindu theology. No, I'm just saying what they believe. Um, and they said this before Christianity was even around, that this is a process that involves eternity. And I think they've got it right. I think we as Christians are so locked into this time human time frame god remember god's not bound by time and as peter says if you want to put him on a timeline he'll consider one day a thousand years as one day okay a thousand years is one day so we as human beings 
um, the vast majority of us do not even live to be a hundred. So a thousand years to us is it's like an eternity, but to God, it's only one day. So uh, God is not constrained by time. Indeed, God uh, invented time. And uh, it says in the book of Revelation uh, that there will be time no longer. Uh, it said, God sent an angel who stood upon the land and stood upon the ocean and raised his hand to heaven and and swore by him who lives forever and ever, there shall be time no longer. So that's something that uh, has been declared. So I believe what's, what, has, what is happening is the, the earth was created. Verse 1, the gap between verse 1 and verse 2 could be, could be billions of years. God created the earth, heavens and the earth, and that this process of people being born, living on the earth, and then being harvested, so to speak, um, and judged, has occurred before. And that would certainly go along with the Hindu view that, uh, you know, uh, the eternal... Uh, you know, that until we get it right, we're, uh, uh, reincarnation, they said reincarnation used to be in the Bible, but they took it out. I don't think they took it out. I just think it's implied. Okay. Um, so this process is a recurring process where uh, the Bible or the earth is the foundation that lasts forever. But it gets created, built up, and destroyed on a regular basis, uh, this this process of of seed time and harvest, God says, will last forever. That's our phys natural realm, but I think that's also a sp symbolic uh, spiritual statement as well. That's an ongoing process, and when it talks about the grapes of wrath, or the judgment described in the book of Revelation, where the blood flows out, you know, as high as the horse's bridle. What does that mean? Well, that represents the souls of men. The life is in the blood. So, and it says elsewhere, you know, that uh, that man is in the valley of decision. And it says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. So there's going to be a great judgment for us all. We're going to look back at our lives. God's going to look back at our lives and that, and ask us one main question, I believe, and that is, did you accept my atonement for your sin, the Lord Jesus Christ? And I believe every human being, to some degree, um, knows that Christ is, is the Son of God. Um, on some level, whether it's conscious or subconscious, Christ said he was the light of the world the light of all men, not some, but all. Um, so how all all the intricacies, I don't pretend to know. Um, man, I could go on for hours. I'm not even getting, I haven't even scratched the surface, so to speak. Uh, we're going to have to cut it short. Uh, my eyes are starting to glaze over at this point. My head is is filled with things I could, I could go on about. That'll be for the next one, so... Here we are in Genesis 1 and verse 2. So somehow I've got to find a way before this year's out to average almost five chapters per study um, if we're going to get through this through the Holy Bible in this year of 2024, uh, studying every chapter and every verse. Okay, so uh, this, uh, this study here has probably gone on long enough for most people, so... I'm going to cut it short on this and give you that food for thought that this earth has been created, destroyed, and recreated before. Okay, I could be wrong. It could be that this is the one and only time and we have one and only shot and, you know, but uh, I can go on and expound uh, upon why I believe what I believe uh, in a future video. Um, there's Pastor Laurie giving his year opening. When you know it, he's going to study the book of Genesis 2. Of course, it's the beginning of the new year. Um, 
So I'm not in competition with Pastor Greg or anybody else, or St. AVS, or any of these other guys giving it, out there giving them Bible studies, as long as they're true believers in Christ. I'm just not in competition with them. We're all on the same team. God bless anybody who wants to know, any who sincerely wants to know the truth about God and Jesus Christ, and how we got here, and who we are, and what we're doing here. Well, that's it for right now. You guys have a good rest of your day, and Study on your own to make sure that anything I say comes out of my mouth is true. Okay, guys, it's been fun. We'll see you next time.